All right, a very beautiful Monday morning to you. It's 8th of January 2021. Good morning. Welcome to News Hub on Silverbird Television and Silverbird News 24. I am Shu Weediji. And I am David Babadike. A beautiful morning. So good to be back on set. Yeah, well, I, really, I really missed you. Yes, so good to have you back. Thank you. Thank You're a lot you. stronger now, right? Oh, yes. You look um, amazing, too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been three days or two days, yeah, two days without uh, of not being on set, and uh, is it like it's like forever. It's like forever, ah. you know. When you love your job so much, uh, yeah. you always want to be there, uh, and then when you have respect for your audience, uh, you just Absolutely. you just want to be off their off their faces. Interesting. Uh, my name is David Babadi. It's the eighth day of uh, February 2021. Yes, uh, beautiful day. So much happened over the weekend. We can't wait to start. Uh, going into all of that. But interestingly, Shil, yes. um, I saw the figures for COVID-19 for yesterday. yesterday. Don't be excited yet. Because it's six Don't something. be excited <laughs> yet. <laughs> Don't be excited yet. The day before, it was over 1,500. 5, yes. And just um, yesterday, it's um, below 1,000, just about 580 or thereabout. Uh, about there about. 600, yes. You know, and then uh, I, I said to myself, should I celebrate? No. Is the, is the cup flattening? The, question, the answer is no. Hmm. Are we, are we all doing the right things? The answer is no. So why should, mm. why should the figures come down? So Absolutely. that is, these are the questions we are asking. Are a, we a, doing a, the right things? A very big question. Yeah. And most of the times, wish, we all know that wishes are not horses. And so even those that are rich may not even be able to ride because they are not horses, so to speak. Uh, it boils down to the fact that we can't start to say that there's a flattening of the curve until we see like a trend in that regard for yeah. the next one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. Yeah. That's when we can start to say, okay, uh, the curve has been flattened and all of that. But the truth of the matter is we keep talking to each other, keep admonishing each other. We know that keeping to those protocols can be very challenging. Even if you talk personally, it's very, very challenging. But it's the right thing to do. It is the responsible thing to do, uh, not just because you love yourself, but because you love people around you. Uh, the vaccine has been an issue. Vaccine coming to Africa has been an issue over the weekend. In fact, on one of our platforms, I just read through, I just watched guys really talk about it, discuss and all of that, about uh, vaccines coming to Africa, why Nigeria wasn't part of, among the four countries in Africa that got the first uh, uh, charge of the COVID-19 vaccine from COVAX. And it's... Uh, it's something that we have to keep looking at, but we hear that the federal government, in fact, WHO actually came out to say that Nigeria has not been disqualified. There were uh, parameters that were deployed to ensure that those countries that were worst hit by COVID-19, especially in terms of deaths they recorded, so to speak, were given priority. And we hear that they're even giving us millions, about 16 million doses instead of the 100,000 that we were initially mm. expecting. Mm. Uh, most of the times we hear that we're getting Oxford AstraZeneca in this part of the world, but... In all of this, it's good for us to be uh, protected against coronavirus. But until then, you got yourself. Big conversation we'll be having today on the show around um, the vaccines, um, our readiness for for the vaccines. Uh, because these are a few concerns that was raised by the WHO, uh, which uh, some people say are the reasons why we missed out on the first tranche. Uh, but having said that, I'm looking at the figures again. Uh, for, for yesterday, uh, 506 new cases, uh, uh, which of course could excite a lot of people. And then some people are saying, oh, let it remain this way, let it stay this way. <laughs> uh, like we keep saying, are you doing the right thing? Uh, how, mm. how compliant are you to uh, the non-pharmaceutical uh, uh, protocols that is, being, that is out there? How compliant are you? I still see people uh, go about without their face mask. I still see people touch their faces uh, touch high contact surfaces uh, at will and then touch their faces as well. It, it is hard. It is really hard. Yeah. Um, it, it is not something that uh, we are used to. But then we call it a new normal. Uh, so we must, we just must have to learn to live uh, with uh, the new normal. So let's look at what our focus for today on the show is. Um, interesting uh, conversation we are looking at. On our focus this morning would be the conversation around... Um, Still, we're staying with the vaccine, I think, I want to believe. Yeah. Yes, yes. How prepared is Nigeria to receive the COVID-19 vaccine? This is a, the big questions that um, has been asked uh, you know, on virtually every platform you, you hear today. We hear that um, the Pfizer vaccine would need a temperature of um, uh, below 70, 70 degrees. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering, below 70 degrees. Uh, uh, <laughs> we are told that uh, what is ice point? Zero degrees, where you have ice. 
Uh, you know, there's something they call ultra, you know, cold uh, setting degrees. Yeah. And most of the time, these ones are used to um, keep vaccines. Most of the vaccines that we have, some of them maybe minus three. We're used to minus yeah, three, minus, minus yeah, two. Yeah, the minuses, yes. But we here, you know, we did see... Uh, um, uh, by about three weeks ago, where the federal government came out to say that we were already acquiring results for, at least for three centers, mm. I'm sure for Abuja, Lagos, and another place, to ensure that we, we could keep the 100,000 first initial, the initially expected you know, vaccines that, that were coming. But we had another 16 million uh, doses are uh, what uh, we would get in the due course. And the question is, how ready are we? Uh, that's the reason why we hear that uh, Oxford AstraZeneca is going to be the preferred vaccine for us because it could be kept under, you know, you know relatively, you know, uh, manageable temperature that we can afford in this part of the world. Let's take this very short break. When we come back, that's our focus for the day. Then you can also join us by sending your message to our social media handles. Who knows? We even have the opportunity to call and talk to us about that. Just stay with us on the program. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. The fight against COVID-19 is far from over. We are presently in the community transmission phase. Unfortunately, this is the most deadly part of its spread, and it's more prevalent in high-density areas. Don't become a statistic. Wash your hands frequently with soap and running water. We'll use a hand sanitizer, and remember to practice physical distancing at all times and avoid crowded places. But if you have no choice, you have the choice of wearing a face mask. Remember, it's not over till it's really over. This is a message from the Silverbird Group. Welcome back. Yes, it's that time where we take a look at the focus on the show. Uh, like we did intimate before the break, our focus on the show is uh, the big question, which is um, how prepared is Nigeria to receive COVID-19 vaccines? That is a big question that we are throwing out there uh, this morning. Before the a, a quick reminder of the quote for the day, our quote says, it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get 
get up. That's coming from, from Vince um, Lombardi. It's not whether you get knocked down. It's whether you get up. That's very key. And also, we may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. That's from Maya Angelo. These are two lovely quotes uh, for this morning. We may encounter many, many defeats, but we must not be defeated, Maya Angelo uh, says. Okay, uh, quickly, quickly, like I did intimate, uh, how prepared are we for the COVID-19 uh, vaccine? How prepared are we to receive uh, the, the COVID-19 vaccine? And um, I've just been told that joining us on this segment is um, Ifi Onyegule. Um, if he's a journalist, a media consultant, just name it. If he's so good to have you join us this beautiful morning. Thank you, guys. Uh, good to see you this Monday morning. Yeah, I'm uh, sure it's going to be a great week I with us, all of us. A wonderful weekend. It's so nice to have you on the program, Ify. Let's talk about this big story about vaccines getting to Africa from the West. I'm sure that there was some, some time ago, you and myself and Agogo, we had a discussion on the parameters that would be deployed in getting the vaccines down. We also argued to the fact that, uh, and asked the question, why couldn't we as a continent, perhaps even as a country, Nigeria, go ahead and get our homemade vaccine for our people, so to speak. But it is it's begun as we speak. Over the weekend, there was the big story about Nigeria being exempted from uh, the vaccines where other countries that gave Cape Verde and three other countries got some allocation from WHO and COVAX arrangements, so to speak. What was your reaction when you first got the, the uh, news that the vaccine actually got across to four countries, but yours? Um, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned Cape Verde as one of the countries who um, receive the vaccine as it is. If you remember when all of these things started, uh, this was one of the countries that came up and said that they had found a cure and everyone was um, one of those, those who said they had found a, a cure and everyone was running to them. But to say that they have received it, I heard you just this morning when you said uh, they focused on countries that had you know huge numbers rising and all of that. So I don't think we should make a case for Nigeria not being part of those who will receive the vaccines first. You also talked about the fact that we have not looked inward to say, how can we do something for ourselves? I remember the onset of this pandemic. I interviewed um, um, Professor Maurice Iwu. Yes, that's a man uh, who came up to say, look, I have an idea what it is that we can do. The government encouraged that effort or that idea that he put forward that's not something I want to touch on. But be that as it may, I think we need to be patient. All we need to do is get ready because you've continued to talk about the conditions that Nigeria truly needs uh, to put that uh, or to, to store the vaccine when it finally comes. For me, I'm interested in what it is that government is doing. I always talk about the National Orientation Agency. What have they done to see that people are sensitized because a lot of people are even saying that they will not take this vaccine when it comes. So what is the National Orientation Agency doing to see that people are sensitized, people are you know, spoken to, people are advised, people are uh, enlightened and informed about what it is when we talk about the vaccine. So I think that's what we need to begin to do now and prepare our minds for what it is that, that, that will come when these vaccines finally get to Nigeria. I know Nigerians are waiting for it. You've seen the rich people going to Dubai, going to the United States of America so that they can actually get their own shots. But for the poor man who's right there, who's not been able to fend for himself, he's not been able to feed, he's not been able to pay his rents and his children to school, how is he going to afford that vaccine? Is it going to be for free? Because I understand that there are some countries that are going to give their citizens the vaccine for free. So these are things we need to look at so that we don't put the cart before the horse. The vaccines will definitely come. Nigeria is not just that country that you can overlook and push to the background. It will come, but how have you been able to sensitize the people? Even very enlightened persons have said that, look, that they might not take the vaccine until they see people who have taken it and see how they end up. So for me, enlightenment is key now before those vaccines finally arrive. Yes, Ify, very well said. Enlightenment is, is key. Sensitization is, 
equally very key. But then, but then the concern uh, for some of us here is away from that. Well, there are millions of Nigerians that are, equal, that are so aware, that are waiting for the vaccines to come. Uh, the question we are asking is, as, as a government, uh, how prepared? We all understand under what conditions this um, vaccine remains uh, potent. Uh, how prepared are we to accommodate mm. uh, this vaccine? And then importantly also is the question around um, distribution of this vaccine. Do we have a, a, a graphical uh, analysis of um, how government intends to, you know, vaccinate people, vaccinate, uh, is it by, by local government, is it by, 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 by state, is it, is it by, by street, is it by, by word? We need government to start telling us exactly what the blueprint is uh, for distribution of these vaccines uh, when they come. 16 million is huge, though paltry to 200 million Nigerians. Mm. Well, you've just said it all, because I won't sit here talking as if I'm an official of government. It just doesn't make any sense, if you ask me. Uh, you've talked about it. They've not given us an idea of how they want it to be, what it's going to be, how it should run in the very first place. And I think that's the job of government. As I said, with enlightening people, they have to tell people exactly what it is and how this thing is going to be administered. I've not seen any government come up to talk about that. Uh, this is a country of quote and unquote 200 million Nigerians. How are you going to reach this number of persons? That's the question we need to be asking ourselves. And the simple answer, if you ask me, as you said, are we ready? I don't think that we are. If there's any state that might be ready, maybe it's Lagos. How ready are the other states? Somebody traveled and came back and said to me, it's only Lagos here where we get to talk about COVID, COVID, COVID. In other states, people are not talking about coronavirus. And you wonder exactly why that is. So the simple answer is no, we're not ready to see that um, we take on this thing when it finally comes in. All right. Are you worried about the issue of storage? For instance, there is a big story that Nigeria expects to vaccinate 40 percent of uh, her population before the end of the year. Uh, 40 percent. Uh, I mean, you just keep asking yourself how this will be possible, bearing in mind that we had some time ago, we had uh, the, uh, um, the manager, director, director general in charge of um, management and research. Uh, in, on the program on News Hub, and he, he, he had his reservations about our capability to uh, store these uh, vaccines, so to speak. So if 16 million uh, vaccine dosages, uh, doses, I beg your pardon, find their way into the country, uh, are you worried about the possibility of losing the potency of these vaccines before they are administered to uh, Nigerians? Or uh, what, what do you know? Uh, when you talk about storage, you know what Nigeria can be, you know what it can be like. Quickly point you to the, forgive me, and uh, I think Nigeria should forgive me for talking about this, the ordinary COVID, um, what's it called now, the package that was put together for poor Nigerians, you know. Imagine the kind of place where it was stored. You find that some of the food items were already getting spoiled. How do we reconcile? That. Now, this is vaccine that's coming. I recall saying to you that I watched the DG of NAVDAC on television, and she said that they were practically ready. So I just want to believe her, give her the benefit of the doubt to say that they are ready so that we don't preempt them. They are ready. We'll see exactly how that pans out. I'm still very worried if he, we are ready, we are ready for me is, a, is, is not a clear indication of true readiness. Like I did ask initially, I'm worried that we just might lose um, most of these vaccines when they come in for lack of ability to store them. Or, or better still, we might have people being injected with vaccines that have lost potency. That is these are the fears. Uh, so it's important mm -hmm. that government comes out and, you know, come out and begin to tell Nigerians what plans they have. I mean, I, I know government is listening this morning. Nigerians need to know what plans we have uh, for the distribution of the 16 million uh, vaccines when they come in. We need, we need graphic details. We need, I mean, graphic distribution map of how these things will get down to people that are sensitized and aware of, of the COVID-19. It is a sad narrative, Ify. It's really, really, really sad. I'm, I'm really, really worried. Trust me, I am. Yes, sir. I'm as worried as you are because we know exactly how it is that we do things here in Nigeria. For us, it's always a fire brigade approach to things. But um, let's give it to government. If the Jonathan's government could 
uh, fight Ebola that was actually more deadly. Of course, when you come in contact with that, it doesn't take time. It takes the person away. If the government at that time could fight it and all hands were on deck, I'm just hoping that this government uh, has woken up to the challenge and the reality that this is a pandemic that you can't just sit and watch, you know, take the people away. I want to believe that they are ready for what it is that's coming. I saw a documentary uh, two days ago about what it is that people are facing. Uh, the reporter went right into that red zone where you had people battling for air and they were all on the ventilators. They showed uh, the, 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 the uh, what's it called now, cylinders all over the place that they had to go refill because these cylinders were going in and coming out empty. So I'm just hoping that government is up and doing so that when these vaccines come, people will get them as a quenji. Let's talk about this story. I'm looking at this story published on January 19, 2021, uh, by this day newspaper, where uh, the executive director of the Nigerian uh, National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, NPHCDA, Dr. Faisal Schwab, said that the federal government uh, has developed a comprehensive vaccine deployment plan with adequate security, uh, storage capacity to keep the COVID-19 uh, vaccine, so to speak. Uh, the, the, the man was very optimistic about that. But the question is, personally speaking, you're going to forgive me this morning, if we would you, you know, accept COVID-19 vaccine? Would you take it? Yes, I will. <laughs> That's a simple answer. Yes, I will. I'm in my 40s. And, um, you know, what's there? If you see what it is that people are going through now and the vaccine comes, why will I not take it? For instance, people who haven't taken it and they come down with the, with the virus, some of them have expired as it is. Yeah. I'm here and I have the opportunity to take the virus. And the government says to me that this is what it is. Why not? I'm open to it. Do you know why I asked that question? About it to say Has this. anything changed from yes, now that you see a lot of people, you know, taking the vaccine? My elder sister actually got her shot on Friday and sent me the video. And I saw one on a family platform. One of my cousins was like, ah, and I was like, what was going on? Why were you so scared? <laughs> Has anything changed from the initial time that we heard about, especially the fast tracking of the vaccine, till now that you are seeing people who are getting the vaccine are now okay? Mm. Um, we need to remember also, let's, let's uh, cast our mind back to when malaria used to be a killer disease. You know, there were lots of conspiracy theories, just like what it is that you have now. Just as people will come out to tell you there's nothing like coronavirus, don't take the vaccine and all of that. I just think people need to be responsible. And that's the message we need to begin to or continue to put across as media persons. When the vaccine comes into that, yes, I know. Anything that you have in Nigeria that has an original, there's always a fake somewhere. And that's why government needs to find a way to make it free so that there won't be any reason for people to go and look for it where it is cheap. I don't know how they're going to do that, but that is the responsible, sole responsibility of government. Has anything changed uh, from when you know it came on and people started getting the shots and all of that? Maybe no, we've not been able to see a magnificent, or how do I put it, a change that you can actually quantify. But I'm saying that we need to be positive and optimistic about the next steps that government will take as the vaccines find their way into Nigeria. So need to be able to trust to trust um, government on this, uh, that I'm going to be getting uh, a shot of what is potent. Uh, being very sure that um, mm. the vaccines that is being distributed and being uh, administered have the potency that it says it, it has. That for me is also very key. We need to trust the system on this. So, so much on the, on the yes. table of, of the yes, federal government here. Yes, we do. We do, it's just about trust. And the government needs to win back the trust of the people. And how do you do that? When the vaccine comes, at first, I want to see the president and members of his cabinet. They've got to be the very first persons to take the vaccine. You don't go and say you're going to first administer it 
on, you know, healthcare workers and all that. You're the leaders. And some of them, or quite a number of them, are within that age bracket, you know, of the vulnerable and all of that. So they should be the very first people to take it on live television so that people can get to watch. That should be something that should be replayed over and over so that the common man understands that it's safe. Because I tell you, in some parts of the country, people believe that that vaccine is coming to, you know, reduce the population of persons in Africa. I don't know where they got that crazy video that was trending all over the place, that people had plans to come reduce population in Africa. It just doesn't make sense. And we need to stop pushing such narratives. It's about our lives. If you see real common people talk about what it is they've been through, you know, with this uh, coronavirus and how they contracted it, you will understand that it is not easy. It is real. It is out there and it's still killing people, just as a very popular radio station would say. Before now, the federal government had expressed concerns about the capability of state government to uh, be able to receive such uh, vaccines when they arrive. And there's no how you can do without ensuring that uh, the states are adequately prepared to receive all of these. But we're hearing, we don't, we're hearing almost nothing from state governments in this regard. Uh, what do you say? Yeah, just begging the question, uh, Shimon, because that's uh, part of what it is that we've been talking about in the last 20 minutes. Um, is government tired? <laughs> that's what I can say. I know the government of uh, Babajidi Sonwulu has been on the forefront of, you know, uh, informing, educating, enlightening people about coronavirus. Uh, what is it that the other state governments are doing? I really don't know. As it is now, we're just talking about sending people as non-career ambassadors. Does, does that make any sense? Is that what we should be talking about now? We're just interested in going back and forth about an IG who has spent over 35 years and should have retired. All we're interested in is giving him a three-month extension. Is that the problem of Nigeria now? I'll say no. We're just going about talking about things that just does not make any sense at this point in time. What is government doing? It should start from top. Since we're always heavy at the top, why can't it start from there to say, this is what the national, national, I'm always talking about that, the national orientation agencies, all the smaller units in different parts of the country, what are they doing? What is the local government doing? Who is supposed to be on the, on the neck or the heels of the local government to say, this is what you need to do to get the people enlightened, to put them through so that they know exactly what it is they're coming. We're just interested in the NIN. What is so special about the NIN that you have to have people gather in a particular place just because you want to get them link their sim with the NIN? Does it make any sense? Because I've asked that question. Do we need those numbers to go to heaven? It doesn't make any sense to me that in a pandemic, in the second wave of the coronavirus, what Nigeria is talking about is a citizen, all vulnerable, hungry Nigerian citizens going out on empty stomach to go <laughs> queue to, to, to link their name with their sin. There's yeah. so much that is upside down and wrong with Nigeria. And I think the time to do it now, it, it, the time to do it is now. We need to get there at that table, sit down and talk about what it is that's going to happen. If not, it's going to be very devastating for her as a country. If he, if he, 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 you just, you just act with this response that you've just given right now, um, after the, the bigger picture, the Nigeria, the bigger picture with the country, Nigeria. Well, if he, uh, so good for your position, so, so, so beautiful position you've expressed here, but then let's also let you know that um, uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back. It will be time for our newspaper review uh, with Ifi Onyebulam still there uh, with us. So stay with us.
And so we'll bring you newspaper headlines on News Hub. Thank you so much for staying with us on the program. Still with us uh, virtually is Ifi Oyebule. We'll be taking a look at the front pages of the newspapers today uh, together with her. Before then, uh, there is an issue that we actually wanted to bring up before uh, we, we cut off uh, the main story on the need for people to always do the right thing, but also government to show empathy when necessary. Some time ago, we brought you a report on uh, an, an, uh, a planned demolition around the um, uh, Okeagon land situated at a local area, Kayeto community, Bejuleki, local government Lagos. Uh, we got a report from people from there this morning. They called us to say that uh, demolition had commenced there. Uh, we're trying to talk to the people in the Ministry of Lands in, in Lagos in the course of the day to see what can be done. We hear that uh, government and the people had been talks and that the people there were short that there wouldn't be any problem. But this morning, we got some of them. They sent us messages across this morning to say that uh, demolition had commenced in their area and they're calling for help. We'd like to hear from the government firsthand so that we can see how there could be a resolution, peaceful resolution in that regard. We're looking forward to that. Hopefully before the end of the day, we'll be able to really uh, give out more uh, information in that regard. All right, so let's take a look at the papers this morning. We're starting with Nigerian News Direct. Uh, the biggest story here, no going back on Cryptocurrency ban, that's according to the CBN, it's the Central Bank of Nigeria. You can turn to page two of the paper to get the full details. And we move above the nameplate this morning. Buhari Tinubu, Mo Ibrahim, Fashola Adishino, Okonjo Wela to speak at Enigbeti next week. I think that would be a very interesting one. COVID-19, Nigeria to receive 16 million doses of AstraZeneca vaccine. You can get that on page two of the paper and there's uh, the story talking about the Africa's richest man, Dangote, uh, as he commences his uh, feeding of one million malnourished children. Uh, the details are there in the paper. And so other stories before then, there is a picture story here showing uh, distinguished uh, men and lady, I can see a lady there. Oh, okay. just distinguished men <laughs> at an event to had to the first Federal Inland Revenue Service during the interaction session between FIRS and agencies under the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy, which held in Abuja. Other picture is there. So other stories. November 2020 performance, NNPC records 13.43 billion naira trading surplus. And that's a good one on page 16 of the paper. Stay away from Ogun Parks, garages, Abiodu wants NURTW, that's on page 30. An Ocean government declares 24-hour curfew in Irekbodu, Urolu councils. Why? Turn to page 3 of the Nigerian News Direct this morning to get all these stories and many more. And our next stop will be the Daily Times. The Daily Times major headline, World Bank task on electricity projects in Nigeria, $500 million fresh aid. World Bank taxed on electricity projects in Nigeria and a $500 million uh, fresh aid. Interesting one there. Uh, get that story right there on the front page of the Daily Times. Uh, moving on. Earth's men attack. Orion War farmers lament loss of over 577 million naira farm produce to hurt men attack. Sad one there. Civil War. Wale Inka fears. Heather's farmers' crisis could degenerate into civil war. Get that story on the front page and continues on on page nine of the Daily Times. Now, cryptocurrency. Monox praise greets CBN's cryptocurrency uh, ban. So much has been said over the weekend around um, the cryptocurrency ban uh, by the CBN. Above the masthead, what do we have? AU must be reformed, stay relevant, says Buhari. AU must uh, be reformed, stay relevant, says Mohamedou Buhari. That's about it on the front page of uh, the Daily Times newspaper. Now let's look at the front page of the Daily Sun today. The biggest story here, Herder's crisis may lead to civil war, showing car warns. There are a couple of writers here, says Buhari's silence gives impression he is complicit. And Yakasai Junaid Hanger, Blast Nobel laureate, Middle Belt Forum, PRP, back him. 
You can get that on page six of the paper. And beside it in place today, a new electoral act ready before end of February. That's according to the National Assembly. No room for independent candidacy. <laughs> That's on page eight of the paper. And there are three picture stories here. I can see someone tearing up. Woman weeping after losing her shop to fire at Taper Garage Market in Guarimpa, Abuja at the weekend. Uh, left up is uh, also uh, below are the rings from the inferno, which uh, people say are becoming too many. Uh, being recorded in Abuja this year alone. So other stories, kidnappers are on page in Abuja. Four abducted residents flee. Police arrest six suspects in security matter. FCT minister, get that on page 27. Bandits kill 19, burn church, several houses in, Abu in Kaduna, beg your pardon, and gunmen abduct Saraba NLC chairman. You can get that on page 5. It's unfortunate. Some still think COVID-19 is hoax, says Archbishop Kaigama, urges for the government to subject vaccine to in-country trial before usage. Get that on page 26. An ex MBA chair slaughtered in a wary office. That's a gory one on page 5 of the paper. Buhari, AU must be reformed to stay relevant. You can get that on page 3 of the Daily Sun today. All right, let's look at the punch before we call on Ify. Uh, uh, this doesn't sound like good news, I'm sure. Many Nigerians won't be excited at this. Uh, petrol price may hit 190 naira as oil nears $60 per barrel. Um, petrol price may hit 190 naira as oil nears $60 per barrel. A few, a few excerpts there that could make um, interesting reading for you there. I'm sure uh, Nigerians are not excited at this headline. Let's go above the masthead. What do we have? 17.0 billion liters of fuel consumed in 13 months. That's coming from the NNPC. Ekiti Ondo deploy a motekun in forest boundaries against headsmen. A few riders there, Ondo Task Force, task force rather, combs uh, forest for errant headsmen. No killer headsmen in Ekiti Forest, fire means aid. And uh, the story around the cryptocurrency is still there. Uh, CBN is saying cryptocurrencies breed illegal activities and raise risk. Let's go below the picture of the day there. Winners, uh, pastor jailed for stealing church 90, churches 90 thousand uh, dollars, 4.5 million naira. Hmm. Interesting read there. And then uh, Abga tackles Ingege as minister calls Obiano idol governor. Again, bandits raid Kaduna communities, 19 killed, houses burned. And below that, pregnant core, Ekiti Sue's IG, says police regulations violate constitution. Get that story on, on page four. Suspected earth men slaughter farmer on Ogun farm. Page seven is where you get the stories. Lord help us. We need to get over this uh, earth men, earth men issues in Nigeria. An NMA attacks health workers union, says uh, Johesu. Uh, envious. Uh, interesting one there. The picture of the day there, we see uh, protesters, protesters in a convoy demonstrating against a military coup in uh, Miami, uh, Miami, yes, on Sunday. Uh, sad one there for the people of that country. But then, that's about it on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Yes. All right, Ify, let's talk about this story, the reservations that uh, Nobel laureate Wally Schwinka has with regard to herders, farmers, clarices, which he says could cause a civil war. Uh, how did you see that statement? We didn't have to wait for um, <clears throat> Kongi uh, to talk about that. Um, he's a man who looks at things from, he looks at it from different angles. And for him to come out to put a tab on that, we need to know that there's something the man is saying that not everyone can actually see at this time. So um, it's not that he's a soothsayer. It's, a, it's, some, it's the handwriting is on the wall. And if it's not nipped in the bud now as it is, I just hope that we'll have a country called Nigeria in a few years to come.
worried when people try to knock uh, the Nobel laureate for that statement. When all you see around is, um, you know, fighting here and there, you hear uh, uh, killer headsmen here and there, and then you begin to wonder, should there be a reprisal? What would happen? That is a big question that a lot of people are not asking. Should there be a reprisal to all of these attacks? Would we still have a Nigeria? Big question that people should, um, you know, think, think about. Um, of course, that's the truth. I saw a video, it was a training video um, on Facebook, I think two days ago, where um, some people narrated how uh, these hoodlums uh, spread nets, whether fishing nets on the road, so that as your car runs into it, it rolls into the tires and you have no choice but to stop. But I, I think this particular um, evening, um, the person who was driving just had to keep driving with the net and one of these guys latched onto his car you can imagine how desperate they were and had to carry them all the way until he got to a safe place unquote where he stopped and this young little boy is a young boy he was arrested uh, or they apprehended him and they sat him down they were trying to interrogate him and he says look that there are so many of them in that in that bush that's how he called it the forest as it is and this was around edo also and he says that the, there are many of them there, just the way that they had, they had uh, apprehended him, that if they send him back to that bush, that they are going to kill him. And he says no matter how much they torture him, he was never going to say anything. He spoke, of course, you will understand that he's from the northern part of the country as it is. I'm not, um, I'm not uh, uh, you know, open to calling everyone a headsman. Oh, when something happens, you target the Fulani headsman. But when you hear that young man as he spoke, he just gave away exactly where it is that he comes from. So I'm thinking something needs to be done. I wonder why the president is just holding his arms and allowing his spokespersons take charge uh, with this. This is Nigeria. If we say that we're one Nigeria, then I think people should be free to move around. I can't remember the last time that I traveled by road just because people are afraid to travel. So we need to wake up, do the right thing. Security is actually a big issue. And I think that's what the president should focus on. Instead of thinking and waiting for the, 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 the Senate to actually confirm the first things he has put forward their names and that they're going as non-carrier ambassadors. It just doesn't make sense to me. When I heard that, it, it, it just weighed me down. And I said, look, is Nigeria finished as it is? And no one's been able to answer that question for me. I see you're still not happy with the <laughs> with the submission of the names of the ex chiefs to be sure, <laughs> the not career ambassadors. No. Next week. <laughs> I can understand, but are you also worried about the possibility of a hike in the price of petrol to up to 190 naira a liter? Oh my God! I saw that coming. You know, I had spoken with a man who used to be at the helm uh, when you talk about um, Pengatan as it is, that's um, Peter Isele, and he said to us, it's, it's going to get up to 200 at some point. And I winced when he said that. He said that to me sometime last year, I had to interview him, and we talked about a whole, uh, a whole lot of things. He's saying to me that things have changed. We cannot run away from that reality, that someday it's going to get to 200. So we don't have to waste time talking about this. I don't want to say that our sufferings will continue, but I'm not surprised that it's about one night because it keeps going back and forth. Today they take off two naira, tomorrow they add something else to it. Now they're saying they might get up to one ninety. My expectation is that it's going to get up to two hundred. So Nigerians should just fasten their seatbelts and see how they can get to manage with the kind of um, hatch that's going to hit us. You know, if it's important that we explain to Nigerians why we are having uh, this increase in palm price. Uh, of course, uh, the headline says um, mm. as a uh, fuel price, palm price. I mean, fuel price, crude price hits sixty. Uh, $60 per barrel. That, that's, that's the concern. We'll, we'll stay on that um, after this call from uh, our caller. We have Ifanyo um, Olumba from Olu in Imo State. Uh, so good to have you join us on the show this beautiful Monday morning. Olumba. Yeah, well, uh, on Shoyinka, well, uh, Shoyinka is the fear of civil war. Firstly, I want to ask, where are the former heads of state and the presidents of Nigeria? What does an elder who sits idly and watch a pig being done at the back of his backyard think? 
This is a pertinent question. Where are the elders of Nigeria? This is no longer an issue of learning. It is an impending reality. Unless in temporary, because the box stops at his table. Like Shaika said, take urgent steps to stem the advertise. Nigeria feels dangerously on the precipice. And the voters are gathering, the long black clouds of uncertainty are coming down. We have arrived from a tough state of nature, where life is short, nasty, brutish, and insecure. I think there is no government. So we are coming to the Remember your calls are welcome. Just go ahead. The numbers will be displayed on your screen. In the show. I think we have another caller. Hello, good morning. All right. I want to talk on this uh, fuel price. Uh, for me, I'm not uh, surprised on this because uh, every day increment from 97 to 150, and Buare for me uh, that fuel will be 15 naira during the So, please. Oh, please. <laughs> I think the network with you isn't friendly at all, but I guess you already made your point. If you call us back, maybe you change your position so that if you have any other thing to add to that, but really, we're very glad that you called on the program today. Uh, it's the news uh, paper headlines on News Hub. Let's keep uh, the calls coming in. Uh, if you let's take a few cup, a, a couple of papers, then we'll come back to you in a moment. The next one is the Nation newspaper this morning, and the biggest story here: rampaging bandits kill 19 in raid on two councils and uh, houses, shops, church burnt. Troops gunned down 52 in Zamfara Forest. Uh, that's a very worrisome story, if you ask me. You can get all the details when you just uh, go into the paper. Uh, that's the nation newspaper today. And above the name plates, Governor of Kwara State, Governor Kwara APC, dissidents face suspension. You can get that on page 10. Military drafted in warring Oshun communities. Government slams 24 hour curfew. That's on page 10. Security and Exchange Commission SEC begins listing of ordinary nominee firms. That's on business page. You can get business pages 17 to 24 today. And uh, Lagos Hanging Better Summit uh, for February 16. And uh, you see all the issues surrounding Miyama. You see uh, people really coming out to uh, uh, protest. It's actually captioned. Uh, um, no to coup, protesters on the streets of uh, Miyama, and they can get all the full details when you get into the paper. Above the picture story today, uh, Marwat Barons, we will smoke you out. There's a big thread there on page 82. And uh, page, okay, page 6, and uh, 82 die of COVID-19 in one week. And that's also inside the paper. On voice designate, fair mission reshuffle with ex-service chiefs nomination. And that's one of the things that Ify has been talking about. There is a writer here, induction shifted, accommodates Olonishaki, Buratai, others. You have the full details on page five. So many other stories when you pick up the nation today. All right, we have a call, up from, a call from um, Abdullahi. Um, Abdullahi, good morning. Welcome to News Up. Yes, she goes. Um, the issue of the issue of uh, petrol, I believe the government should come out and tell Nigeria the truth. Because if you, if you put some petrol price at a particular time, it means there's still subsidy. So federal government should just come out and just remove subsidy once and for all, so that Nigerians will know the direction they are heading to. And then the issue of these headers, frankly speaking, if we don't handle it well, if we don't handle the issue of this headers crisis, honestly, I don't know what is going to happen in this country. The president needs to come out and speak to Nigerians because most of his media ads are, are incompetent. Most of the time they come and talk on the media, they talk to Only thing, so the president needs to take charge. All right, Abdullahi, uh, I'm sure your, your, po your point is, is made, Abdullahi. Um, let's have another call. Uh, we have Solomon calling from Delta State. Solomon, good morning. Solomon, your, the volume on your TV is still up. Solomon, please turn down the volume on your TV. 
Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank Good you. Good morning. Turn down the volume on your TV, said Solomon. Uh, we might have to cut the score. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. All right, I'm fine. I'm calling from Worry. Yeah, speak to us, Solomon. We can hear you. Yeah, yes, I've done that. Good morning. Okay, go on. Go ahead. Yes, uh, I think... Uh, uh, my problem is uh, Ameshi and uh, Lai Mohamed. Hmm? Yes, go ahead, Solomon. Yeah, my problem is uh, Rotini, Shibike, Rotini, Ameshi and Lai Mohamed who are APC 15 that uh, ordered that uh, Mr. Jonathan concerning swell uh, increase and the other. But now they are the people championing swell increase to suffer it. I think uh, God will pay them back when they eventually retire from APC. Okay. That is my take. Thank you. With due respect, Solomon, I think uh, we don't have any headline in that regard. Yes. And whatever you've, you've said, you're a Nigerian, you're entitled to that. But we want to really thank you for calling on the program today. But thank you so very yeah. much. Uh, if he. <laughs> It's important we educate um, Solomon a little bit on the issue why uh, there is an um, expect, expected for pump price rise. Yes, uh, the, the the concern here is the fact that we don't uh, we don't we don't um, what's the word now we we refine? Uh, we don't refine our fuel here. So it is the cost price of of fuel that is giving rise the, the landing cost of fuel that's giving rise to the increase because you also understand that. Um, Petrol is, a, is an international commodity. So we sell our crude, we refine oil. We sell our crude at $60 per barrel, we refine oil at all of that increase. So that's, that's what we're suffering right now. Not until we begin to refine our fuel. Our, our crude here we probably will still um, keep um, being so susceptible to uh, the international price of, 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 of rise and fall of crude oil price in the international market. That in itself is a major uh, challenge here. Um, interesting. Yes, um, if we, let's, let's look at the Guardian newspaper here uh, before you come. I'm sure you're, you're gearing to speak on a few other issues, If we, uh, Let's look at the Guardian newspaper here. Uh, major headline, government needs 2 trillion naira to immunize over 200 million Nigerians. Government needs 200, 2 trillion naira to immunize over 200 million Nigerians. Uh, a few writers there may spend 921.2 billion naira on 140 million people by 2020. Logistics, three times cost of procuring vaccine, says PSN. Uh, engage a consultant, a public health pharmacist to reduce costs. All still around them, um, the vaccine issues. Uh, let's move on here. Below the picture of the day, what do we have? Devolution of power, solution to Nigeria's problems, says Agbakoba. Devolution of power, solution to Nigeria's problem, says Agbakoba. And uh, moving on, why Nigerians will return the PDP in, okay, in 2023. That's coming from Wiki. It is used IGP over dismissal of pregnant police women. Um, interesting conversations there. Bandits kill 19 persons in Kaduna. Niger Delta stakeholders fault relocation of DPR to Abuja. Many conversations here on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. All right, Ife, quickly, just this one for the roads before we talk to you. Nigerian Tribune today, the biggest story, earned allowance. Federal government owing varsity workers 150 billion naira. Uh, unions say workers not paid since 2011. An approval of 20 private varsities in mockery of Nigeria's education, says us. You can get all the sides to this story on page two of the paper. And about the name place, one of the uh, training stories, cryptocurrencies illegal. Use for money laundering, terrorism. That's according to CBN. 
And these are the, the, the bodies coming out uh, clear now. Bandits kill 19, raise houses in two Kaduna local government areas. And so many other stories there. If we, let's talk about uh, stories that are here. For instance, let's pick one that we've not even talked about in a while. Uh, the issue between the federal government and ASU uh, and NASU as we speak at the moment. What's your take on the issue at hand? Now, before we talk about this um, yes. issue um, about the federal government and uh, NASU, as you talked about, I want to take uh, David on this his explanation about why uh, petrol or the price of petrol may go up. Because I'm wondering, why will a country like Nigeria keep explaining to the people why they have to keep paying more for petrol? I'm sure when you talk about it now, David, uh, somebody from government will come up to tell you, do you know how much petrol is being sold in Saudi Arabia? Do you know how much is being sold in that, that, that country? And they will not go take a look at the quality of life or living for the people of that country. We need to stop giving excuses why Nigerians have to continue to suffer. For me, I don't even check how much it is that is sold. I just drive in and I, 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 I have them fill my tank and I zoom off. How many people are able to do that? People go on public transport. They hop on buses here and there. They have no idea what it is that's happening. They just get to the bus. You can't even plan your movement in a place called Nigeria because you get out. The transporters will have to increase the fare and you find that you're stranded. But that's by the side. Um, if we're talking about what it is that government is doing or the issues revolving around government and you know uh, people in the education sector, as she has asked me, for me, I'll just say they need to they need to talk about the real issues, what exactly it is that's the problem, and find a way to solve it. I'm sick and tired of talking about what it is that education should be right here in Nigeria. I said sometime last week that I'm hoping and looking forward to the day that the president will declare a state of emergency on the education sector. That sector needs to be fixed. I don't know why we're doing a back and forth on the things that's going on. Is it that the uh, the people who teach, let's look at it now, the lecturers, is it that they are having the best of life? Is it that the students are getting the, the best when it comes to education? The answer is no. And that's why everyone is looking towards public, uh, private universities as it is. Uh, recently, there was a news that 20 extra universities uh, have received the approval, the nod, uh, you know, to go ahead. And I'm asking, what's going to happen to the other ones that are there. You want to kill them just the way that you killed public schools. It just doesn't make sense. So the idea is getting your priorities right. For me, I think government should get her priorities right so that things can actually run on their own. All right, Ify, uh, beautiful, beautiful explanation there. But then let me also say this before we let you go, uh, that the explanation around, around the fuel is um, to bring to the fore the need for Nigeria to begin to take the issues around refining our, our crude oil a lot more seriously. That in Simple itself is the bane of all this Why increase the increase that we are facing. Working? Lack That's of refining of our crude ourselves. oil is the issue. Thank you so very much, Ify Onyegule. Yes. Thank you so very much. That will be it Thank you. on Thank our you paper review me. this morning. When we'll take a break we'll come back it'll be time for the news on the other side stay with us the fight against covid-19 is far from over we are presently in the community transmission phase